Alright, I am back streaming live. And today is Thursday, January 24th, 2019. It's uh, 4 40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm going to be streaming, t streaming today while I try to fix yet another issue in the PowerShell Core web commandlets. This is a uh, issue that's uh, been around for a while since the uh, move to Hi Glenn. It's been around since the move to the HTTP client uh, interface when we moved to Core. And the gist of it is that we don't have a way to actually define the char set used or the encoding, content encoding, if you want to call it that, used in the uh, request message sent to the servers. So let's say that you're doing an application JSON response uh, request, right? And you're doing a JSON payload to an API of some kind. And you use invoke rest method and you're expecting it to come back. Um, and you're using, I don't know, uh, some Russian characters. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it fails or that the data when you go to retrieve it is not correct. You'll see question marks or something like that. The cause for this is that uh, it's not able to automatically uh, use the right encoding and uh, we can't even specify it. Um, there's a error that happens when you try to uh, specify a full um, content header uh, that uh, you can't get around. So there, there's just nothing you can do. Uh, so it almost always sends as the default encoding, which is like, uh, let's see, it's, uh, Western European Windows 1252. It's code page 1252. So that's what gets used by pretty much everything when we send a request, because there's no way to specify anything else. Um, and that's obviously bad. Uh, we need to be able to support uh, UTF-8. The RFCs for uh, JSON and the application JSON content type say that they should be by default uh, UTF-8 if no char set is available. And we're kind of breaking that RFC when we do that. So the result is a lot of uh, foreign language users who are, are uh, angry that uh, this isn't working. And it also results in some other weird behavior. So if you're doing some kind of like content length checks on it, uh, your content length won't match uh, because encoding will result in a different byte length uh, if you use, try to use a different encoding than what you're expecting. So if you're trying to get the content length from doing like UTF in, encoding and looking at how long that is, but we're sending it as Windows 1252, um, and you've got some higher level uh, characters that would fall outside of that, you're going to get a truncated um, uh, response. It's going to be smaller. Uh, so your payload size is going to be different than you expect. So there's a lot of weird stuff that happens here as a result. And uh, that's one that I've been thinking about for a while, how we tackle it. And the right way to tackle it, in my opinion, is that we will take a fully qualified um, content type header and uh, to kind of show you what that would look like this right here is what a fully qualified content type header looks like it has application JSON and a char set now just to kind of demonstrate how broken this is at the moment we'll go into here and I need to make sure that I'm in PowerShell um, 6. So just to demonstrate here, this should be PS version table 1612. So this is the latest release that we have available. And if I do IRM uh, and URI equals uh, uh, HTTP 
forward slash HTTP bin dot org forward slash post method. You're not going to give me a method? No. Method posts body a and then content type. Missing, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Hopefully that's a little bit uh, less intrusive on the music front. So there we go, this is uh, uh, content. Uh, the commandlet cannot run because content type parameter is not valid content type header. Um, and that's due to some weirdness in here. Um, and if we try to do um, the uh, skip validation, I need to remove the uh, thing here. Uh, we'll do this, but the thing is that the payload wouldn't actually be in uh, uh, UTF-8. It would still be in that. It's hard to get that back because um, it won't actually show. But it sends the header as being like char set UTF-8, but the actual payload is uh, in the default windows. So things would get uh, messy. I think there is a good... Uh, example in this one that I can use. So this this body right here. So I'm going to post this uh, body here. And we'll see that it sent question marks instead of this, which, sorry, I don't know what that means. But uh, that's the problem. Like, doesn't encode it properly. So uh, to fix that is, is kind of a weird thing. Like, how do we go about it? What's what's the right way to do it? And I think that I've got a pretty good idea. So just going through the code right here in the web commandlets, uh, this is the part of the code. It's in the web request ps commandlet common cs um, file. And this is the kind of base code for both invoke web request and invoke rest method. And this is like where the bulk of the work actually gets done for doing the requests um, because both commands basically share the same request um, code. Uh, they do different things with the responses, uh, but they do, they do share the same kind of uh, request code. So this body object is, is where this thing gets parsed in the last one in here is where we actually do a type of string. So if I go in here and I go to uh, go to definition, um, we can see that this is the set request content method, which actually processes the body into uh, what gets sent. All the other ones, whether it's a form or a, uh, a key value pair or anything else, they all like. Uh, do some magic to turn them in the strings and they all eventually come here um, so uh, all the different body types that we do with uh, like multi-part form content and with uh, uh, form uh, with uh, app, the key value pairs you can put in a hash table all that get turned into a string and then come here so what's happening when that error hits that uh, it's not a valid uh, header is that it's hitting this line right here and media type value, uh, media type header value, um, something you can do to create this. And I can kind of demonstrate this right here with uh, with PowerShell. 
So I'm just going to do media, oh, media type header value, new application JSON. That works. Um, but if I do like char set on that, it's null. And if I do what the next thing here is, it does coding, get coding on that. Um, uh, it would try to either get the uh, default one or uh, it does nothing. So it's it's crazy, right? Like, anyways, uh, and if you try to send in it the fully qualified content type like this, we get an exception, which is what's causing this to, to bubble up. Um, as a uh, as an error in invoke rest method and invoke web requests so uh, the solution I think is going to be pretty simple um, I think that instead of doing new here we need to do dot parse uh, we could do try parse um, but we're already like catching some exceptions here in handling that so we can just do parse uh, so I think doing that will just fix it and just to kind of do a proof of concept of that. If I do parse here, I actually get a valid char set. And if I do, um, if I assign this to uh, type and then do uh, encoding, get encoding type dot char set, I actually get UTF-8. Um, code page 65001. So that's looking uh, uh, promising that we can actually do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, save this file. I'm going to build a... I should already have this imported. Oh, that's right. I restarted into a PowerShell 6. Need to import the build PSM one so I can get the PowerShell's uh, build uh, commands into my environment, and then do start ps build uh, clean One output running there, but go back to the terminal, stay on the terminal. OmniSharp and the terminal are battling for who gets uh, screen time. I love this message that I'm getting that like uh, a compatible SDK version for global uh, .json uh, 21403 was not found but it actually works and like if you say like it, it figures out that it's there i don't get it it's like weird i don't know what the issue is with that some fake error all right so we've built it and um Nice little trick that I learned from Steve the other day. This will launch the built uh, version. So if we look at the uh, PS version table, we see that we're on 6.2.0 preview 3. And uh, it's the commit ID that I'm at right now. So uh, basically we want to run through those commands that I did before um, to see if they fail. Uh, I don't know if this is going to copy and paste properly, but we'll try. So yeah, we're just going to do an evoke rest method to the uh, hdbbin.org method post with this body that has a payload of this. I'm going to take away skip header validation. We shouldn't need it anymore. 
And then I'm going to also do verbose because that will give us some information about the encoding that's used. And we can see that the uh, uh, response now has the proper characters in it. So we're pretty good there. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, uh, that it's a simple fix. Uh, I've fretted over this one for a while because my original thought was that we were going to have to do like IRM and then do like uh, request encoding. Add this and then you would pass whatever encoding you needed it to do. Uh, and that would be uh, a little cumbersome. Uh, the only problem is that uh, we're still going to see this when you don't do char set UTF-8, it's not going to do it um, because it's still going to do the default. But I think in a separate PR, I want to do actually um, for application JSON, since the RFC calls for UTF-8 as the default, that if there's no char set and the content type is application JSON, uh, then we're going to assume that we want to do UTF-8. Uh, we special case that already on the response side of things. So if the response says application JSON and there's no uh, char set uh, sent, we assume that the response is encoded in UTF-8. That fixed a lot of problems for us. So uh, the next thing to do is to think about how to write a test for this. Um, so I'm going to need a uh, a test uh, in there, and I need to look at the web listener, which is the tool to do um, test against with the with this, and see what uh, controllers I have available that I can do. Um, encoding controllers are more about response. Uh, maybe I can do it with posts or get um, response controller. I think this is the one that hmm. Let's see, there is a readme for this. Let's see which endpoints home. Should be one for auth negotiate, certs, deflate, gzip, delay, delete. It's a response, get, link, posts. So multi-part post, patch, post. So there is a post one. All right. Um, I'm going to do start PS pester against a file that I know won't run the tests um, without uh, some additional things. And that'll help me build the uh, testing tools and especially the web listener. So I can actually do some uh, tests against that API. So let me test PowerShell modules, utility, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the web command line ones we're going to end up using, having to edit it. The output on the screen is a little messed up, but I'm doing PS start PS pester against this path. Um,
So while that's building, I'm going to take a real quick break and I will be right back. All right, so as expected, it didn't run any tests, but uh, we were just doing that so that we could run, uh, get the uh, web listener up and running so we could run some tests again it, against it. So we should have two power shells. Um, this one has the uh, six open in it. Um, do web listener. WL uh, start dash web listener. So the web listener is uh, a ASP net core um, app that we have in here. That's basically just a couple of local endpoints to do things. So if I do uh, URI equals get um, web listener URI URL rather and then test post if I look at URI that's the post one so I'm gonna test this um, the current one against it since we know that this fails uh, with the current version. And good, we get back question marks. Uh, and I should be able to do um, result. In fact, I'm going to just shorten this up a little bit and do just these characters. Hope this isn't like a Russian curse word or something. I uh, I really have no clue what it what it is. Um, so I apologize if it's offensive or something. Uh, so I should be able to do result and then result dot data equal and that's uh, couple of question marks and I'll just do that it's true let me just make sure typing question mark and it's not some kind of copy paste weirdness yeah 
Awesome. So that uh, definitely fails here. So let's start the. Um, uh, let me output URI just so I've got that. Just do that, and then. do this so I've got it and then go up and start the built one and do uh, IRM that and then for URI we'll change that to this uh, post URI. And there we go, data equals that. So we have a valid test for, for it passing. Um, I can reuse an existing API. Luckily this time around, I don't have to uh, do any kind of weird, uh, I don't have to create a new web listener API like I did um, for one of the previous PRs that I didn't end up recording it, but uh, uh, Ilya requested that I actually write some tests for one of the PRs that it, I recorded live and I had to create a new uh, endpoint. I'll show you that real quick though. The uh, web listener controllers and then encoding. Uh, so remember we were dealing with that uh, uh, code page 936 issue. Um, so I had to create a new uh, code page 936 uh, endpoint on here that returns some stuff. So if I do like uh, IRM and do encoding CP936. I get back some uh, something like that. And if I run this in the current version, I get this weird error. So just trying to show what that did. But basically, this is just a ASP.NET endpoint, ASP.NET Core endpoint that. Uh, gets the uh, CP936 encoding and codes a string. Um, I had to do raw bytes inside the C-sharp um, when I tried to actually use the uh, simplified Chinese characters inside the source code. They came out mangled, so I had to actually get the raw bytes of the, uh, of the characters and create a byte array and encode that byte array and send it, and I get back the, uh, the correct things. I don't know what the deal is with that. It was uh, the files in UTF-8 and I guess lost in translation somehow, like just compiled and turned into garbage. Coding is hard, man. Uh, strings are not as simple as you would you would like them to be. <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, I just wanted to show that off. I don't. I luckily this time around, I don't have to do that, but I do need to do some some tests for posting to and then you do it both for IRM and uh, I, IWR so I'm gonna look in here and try to find some tests that are similar uh, there were some encoding things you look for UTF-8 Invoke REST method supports a request that returns the page containing UTF-8. See, this is the test that I had to add for CP936. I'm going to add a new test right beneath this one, saying it invoke REST method supports Sending requests as UTF-8. 
eight. URI on this is uh, get web listener URI test post that's uh, all I need for that and then uh, I'm not going to do the command. That's the old way of doing it. So I don't want to do all this craziness. I'll go ahead and do it. Um, body. And I want to reuse this, uh, this very reliable um, Russian here. So I'm going to do a quick uh, Google Translate on that. All right, uh, so that looks harmless, uh, hopefully. I don't know if that came through, but we'll uh, mute this for a second. All right, so apparently that's what that is. So. Um, and it means check, I guess. So we're uh, good uh, on that. I think that it's a harmless word, I hope. Um, unless check means something completely different that uh, I'm unaware of. And we'll do... This in the body. And we'll do... Content type... So that should work. Um, I think that's the bare minimum that's needed. Uh, oh, method post. Definitely. This one's not gonna work the way that uh, I want it to completely, but uh, give it a shot here. Um, output dot. Let's see, what does this look like? This is a helper function that was created before my involvement in the project to kind of execute this. Um, just the raw script block result. Okay. All right, so, so output.data then should be exactly
All right, save this uh, and then we'll do um, start PS Pester that we did before, but we'll do uh, exclude tag equal null. I think that's all I need to do. still got web listener running that's what's complaining about here stop web listener there we go we're just gonna see if this uh, test works run through a lot of tests to get there. I should have done trunk, uh, terse. It's also a good way to see if uh, the changes broke anything else. Um, probably not likely in this area. It looks like the uh, test passed because we've already gone through it. Yeah, so that, that test passed. So now we need to do the same thing for the uh, invoke web request once. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about before where we've already added in that the... Um, When the response from the server is uh, application JSON, we ensure that it's a UTF-8. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, version of that test that we already did for invoke REST method for invoke web request. Um, I just need to grab my Russian, which is going to be all the way back up here, probably, and lost in the sea of texts. Just don't want to scroll around inside the, uh, yep. So test is post. And invoke web request URI URI dash uh, body equals that uh, content type equals application JSON UTF-8 and method equals post. All right, and then we need to result equal execute validate response and output coding output content um, and this should be, uh, object, I'm just going to call it object equals should match, but I don't want to do, oh, no, I want the actual should be exactly could do match and then uh, it's 
still probably be accurate, but I like to be even more accurate. Convert from JSON object dot data should be exactly that. So save that and now we'll run the same test again and I'm going to do terse so that we don't have to spam the entire screen with uh, test results. Oh, good catch on the thing there. Let's fix that. We don't need that. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a very big proponent of using um, splatting. And uh, the result is that I uh, sometimes screw that up when I'm trying to do things on actual command line. Thanks, SK82 Jack. Skatey2 Jack? Maybe? Skate2 Jack. There we go. I'm going to go with Skate to Jack. I don't even know what context this is in. It is in the, like, none. So it's already run. Uh, cool. It's before you've been hit context, so it's already, test already passed. All the tests have passed. Um, we're good to go there. Uh, that's awesome. So that was... Uh, a lot less stressful i i've been mulling over this uh for so long like the uh let me see when this was originally filed um yeah in august this is when it first came up and this isn't even like the first instance of it it's the first one that was like a repeatable bug that i could actually do but other people have complained about it but not been able to provide any kind of reproducible um, way to do it and without any way to reproduce it it's like okay well maybe it's something in your environment but uh, this one was rep reproducible and there's I think there's a couple of references to others I guess not um, anyways there were some other tickets that were open about some uh, some very similar things and just really happy to get this one done and uh, reason why this one came back up is that there is uh, this issue filed today um, so it, it brought this back up and this one is about like they're, they're saying that the content length is incorrectly calculated and it's kind of like this issue is a little all over the place um, kind of bounces around. It doesn't exactly have anything to reproduce this, but I'm almost like 100% sure this content length difference that they're seeing when they try to calculate it versus uh, uh, having it done is because they're trying to send UTF-8 encoded JSON and we're definitely not encoding as UTF-8. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll fix that with this. So getting back into VS Code here, I already created a uh, branch from master, so this should already be up to date. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stage these changes and just review what we did. The uh, big change in the code was to go from, instead of just instantiating a new type, a new media type header, we're doing a parse operation. And that should be uh, that should be better because we know that uh, doing a new one with a fully qualified content type fails, but parsing works um, for whatever reason. So uh, that's the only real code change. And now we've got two tests that were added. Um, this is a Vogue web request test that just uh, checks to make sure that we get. We're able to send and receive back 
the um, uh, Russian. I hope it's Russian. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and then same with invoke rest method. So we're good there. These look decent tests. The tests pass, so I'm happy with that. So it's time to do this and do uh, feature so that the feature tests are fired off. Fix. Um, char set issues. Request char set issues in web commandlets. I think that's decent for a uh, limited amount of space. Push that up. Go to Firefox. Go to the base of the repository here. There it is. It's saying that I've got a new thing here. So we're going to create a pull request. We go against master. Just uh, make sure that there's no weird changes to master in the meantime. So this is the same things that I'm seeing on uh, on there. Uh, there's one commit. We're good there. Um, uh, this closes. Um, Closes 7618 and then describe the issue. Um, instantiating a new, I knew I would spell this wrong, instantiating a new. I'm going to copy paste this type name because I always get it screwed up. Get it down here. Object fails when the Content type parameter includes a char set such as get this down here. This makes it impossible to set the content encoding ensures we actually get proper when the char set is present. Thus allowing users to set 
their request encoding via proper content type values. I'm going to include uh, both uh, of these tickets for uh, context. PR has a meaningful title, fix, uh, it's not spelled properly, but it's mean fix, request, char set issues in web commandlets. That's descriptive, X. Uh, summarize changes, that's been done. Change is not breaking, nope, it's fixing. Uh, I didn't make any new files, so that's already good. PR is ready to merge, yep. Um, user facing changes, no. Uh, Uh, testing. Yep, I've got uh, feature is added. So we're good there. Create the pull request. Well, that's it. Um, so that's another issue down. Um, one that's been open for a while. One that's plagued me a little bit. Um, one that ended up being a lot easier to fix than I realized. Uh, I swear they're not all this easy. Like the 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 fixes that I've done in these uh, past three streams have turned out to be um, relatively simple code changes to fix, whereas uh, they're not always this easy. For example, if I were to go back to work on the open issue I have on, let me see if I can find that. If I've got all of these open. Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to find it or I'm probably skimming too fast. But uh, I have an open issue about uh, supporting um, certificate validation. And uh, um, yeah, that one was a mess. I've already gone through like uh, three failed uh, tries at that and have like hit the road, hit the hit the wall so many times on some kind of solution. Uh, so that one's definitely a uh, complex one. And then some of them have required some uh, some tricky work to actually make tests for them. Uh, whereas the code fix wasn't so hard, but I did need to create some interesting uh, things in the web listener. So anyways, that's uh, fixing that particular issue. Now, it doesn't necessarily really fix these two issues because they're sending application JSON. And to do that, they need to change their update their code to include char set UTF-8. Um, so I do need a separate uh, pull request to address the um, lack of uh, the address that as the default. Uh, but that's going to be a little tricky to to test um, the uh, I guess I guess I could do it kind of the same way with the same test with the post without the char set included um, and that would work but the, the code area is the same exact place so if we go back into VS code here and we look at this uh, in this area um, basically, uh, if content type is not null, um, try to do some, some stuff here. Um, so if string is null or empty there, uh, do some catching here. And then uh, I think, yeah, after here, we would do something like uh, if... Uh, content content 
type equal and there's a there's somewhere I'll have to find it but we have a constant for application JSON um, so if it if it was that uh, application JSON type then um, you know uh, encoding equal get uh, encoding up dot get encoding utf8 so it would be something like that um, so if it was just to For, for show application JSON. So content type equals ac ap application JSON. So basically adding this here would uh, special case that if um, um, Yeah, I'd have to do some other logic. I'm oversimplifying this, but uh, basically that's it. Oh, just special case uh, application JSON and automatically set that. Um, we'll just uh, close out of the file and not save. That's the best way to do it. All right, so that's uh, fixing that issue. Um, I uh, appreciate everyone who's watching and appreciate everyone who's uh, watching the recordings of this. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back.